So check it out. It worked. I managed to reverse regenerate B back into B. You're like a half and a third the man you used to be last episode. Well, you know. I got nothing. I'm still not finding it. Mm. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out. Maybe you guys can help us out here. Now, uh, today's topic of interest is Sleepy Hollow. I know the TV show for, that's on Fox running currently. Uh, as we're talking about this episode, it's actually in Season 2. It just came back from its um, mid-season hiatus, which is just complete and utter bullshit. Yeah, we got a whole episode on mid-season hiatuses. I'm eating a chocolate orange right now. It's stupid. Not the orange. This is good shit. Stupid, too. Whose oranges would say Terry's on them? Terry's. I ate an orange today. You know what? It didn't tell me shit. Yeah, but it also wasn't made of chocolate. True. Delicious, delicious chocolate. With hint of orange flavor. Okay, but... Alright, the problem is... Um... The show was really good in the first season. I like it. He like it. Everybody like it. Season 2 comes around. Things start going a little funky. You know. There's going to be a lot of spoilers in this if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, spoiler alert. So you haven't seen it? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so... Um, just following along with Sleepy Hollow, so, basically, um, where this whole story comes from, so Ichabod Crane uh, faces off against the, uh, the British army, you know, during, uh, Revolutionary War. Anyway, he's, um, he comes across this creature wearing a metal mask, brandishing an axe, so he gets into a sword fight with it, and he ends up getting its blood in him. I don't know. Kinda, yeah. Well, they mix. They yeah. fell in the same puddle of blood. Yeah. Because he cuts its head off and it stabs him through the chest and, you know, they both die. But, if you follow comic books, uh, you know, death is just kind of like a temporary setback. And it is here, too. Because, uh, fast forward years and years and years to modern times, and all of a sudden, everybody wakes up. Headless Horseman wakes up, and Ichabod Crane wakes up because they're intertwined, because they're blood mixed. Which, you know what I thought they were kind of going for originally? I thought it was going to be a thing like you wouldn't be able to kill the Horseman unless you killed Ichabod, and like eventually he would like realize he had to sacrifice himself to ultimately stop the Horseman. You know, I think that might have been what they were going for before it got popular, and they're like, oh shit, we have to find a way to fix this. Yeah. Because, um... Because, yeah, all of a sudden, like, it all started getting wonky. And basically what the format of the show was, for the most part, is that the horseman popped up every so often in the first season. But um, it was kind of like one of those shows, like uh, Supernatural or you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where they had, like, a monster of the week. Yeah. You know, like, there's a monster that pops up, and, you know, they have to figure out where it came from and how to stop it. And Except you also add in the fun of Ichabod being out of place with the world, you know, you occasionally see him watching TV yeah. and, you know, making comments about how reality TV is horrible. Yeah, they play with it a lot, the fact that he's out of time, you know, he's from a different time period. And plus it has that one comedian in it, uh, who's that? The black dude? Orlando Jones. Yeah, Orlando Jones. I look, make seven up yours, guy. That, yeah, that's right. Make seven up, up yours. yours. Best right. commercial ever. Is <laughs> that the TV? The T-shirts that make seven on the back said "Up yours," and you know, ha ha. And then, then there was Evolution. You remember that movie? That was probably my favorite thing he was ever in, besides the Seven Up commercials. He's funny. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. He's funny. Yeah. I never seen him in a dramatic role before this, though, and I was actually really surprised with how well he was handling it. Yeah. I know you still haven't seen the very, very last episode. Up until this newest one, have you? No, I just saw whatever was on Hulu. 
Yeah, I don't know what's on Hulu. I don't have Hulu Plus. Or Hulu itself. Nor should you, because you know what? Hulu Plus is kind of balls. Yeah. That's why I don't. Because I hear it has, like, you know, commercials and all this other shit on it. Still nothing on it? Well, here's here's the thing. Okay, so season two. This, this isn't is, even the biggest problem. It's just the one that's giving us the biggest headache. Yeah. Like, this is, this is where things start getting wonky. The first season, excellent. I recommend it. Dave recommends it. Watch season one. Season two... Watch at your own risk. Yeah. Because it starts getting really weird, and, like, you know, they they kind of resolve... Well, <coughs> they kind of resolve the problem they created mid-season, and now they're kind of starting over. I don't know, it's kind of weird. But anyway, yeah. But anyway, you know, the Founding Fathers, you know, using their, you know, black magic, as they're well known for, um, created, um, like, an anti-headless horseman, basically. But the problem was that they needed part of one of the Horsemen of Death. Oh, by the way, the Headless Horseman is one of the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. In, in case you you were wondering. Honestly, I never saw that coming, but hey. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, that was part of Season 1. It, it You know, it's kind of cool that they actually have an explanation for him. Because in the original story that this is all based off of, there wasn't really a story per se that I can remember. Um, anyway, though, yeah, so the Founding Fathers use their black magic and their science to create basically a Frankenstein monster, but they were never able to get a body part from one of the horsemen to actually animate it, because that's apparently what was needed for the spell to work. But they just happened to have his head uh, that had been tucked away in a grave up until, you know, shit hit the fan in the first season. And then they had it in a safe. Yeah, anyway... The police had it. Um, anyway, they brought this thing to life, and it went off to battle the Headless Horseman and the Horseman of Death, which uh, was actually the son of Ichabod. Horseman of War. Yeah. War. A Horseman of War. Yeah. And Death. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the Headless Horseman is the Horseman of Death. Uh, Pestilence is trapped in a side dimension somewhere with the remains of the Roanoke colony, the one that went missing. Yeah. Which, you know what? I like samurais. I really do. I why don't is, know why... Why is pestilence a samurai? Jab at Japanese people, maybe? Yeah, I know. I think it's kind of racist, but you know, it's... Motherfucker. That's just... Is it still not say, or did it actually... No, no, it says... What happened? Okay, so... Uh, Katrina left to remain with the horsemen as a mole, blah, blah, blah. Spoilers, we already covered... Uh, Ichabod and Abby retreat, and the kindred disappeared on a horse, leaving death and war unable to follow. Never returning to Ichabod and Abby, its current whereabouts are unknown. So... Motherfucker. So it really did just... Wandered off. Yeah, so they created this powerful creature that could fucking fight and potentially kill the four horsemen of the apocalypse. <clears throat> and then they lose track of it. And they never mention it again. Because you know what would have came in real handy when they found that sword that can kill anything? An yeah. unkillable monster that could also potentially kill anything. Exactly. Can you imagine an unkillable monster wielding a weapon that could kill anything? And they just let it wander off. <laughs> it, it never came back. It never came back to help or, you know, to figure out where it came from or what it was supposed to be doing. Yeah. It just it just fucked off. It just fought off, you know, two of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and just went off to live its own life, I guess, because, I mean, season two isn't finished yet, mind you. I mean, it could pop up again, I hope. Maybe. But I don't recall, I mean, Dave thinks he remembers him mentioning something about the four or er, about the Headless Horseman's head, which it's currently wearing. Well, I think that's what they were talking about, because the Horseman's head is on top of the Frankenstein monster, which wandered off. They don't know where it went. It could have just went to the store. You know, maybe it went like, back to England. Yeah. Can you imagine it's like a, an old-timey newspaper boy? <laughs> it's like wearing like the little shorts and like the Working hat. Working at Starbucks as a barista. Because <laughs> <laughs> it still talked, sort of. I mean, it had one line. Yeah, well, for the most part, it was just grunting a lot. And then it said one word, and then it was like, oh, now it's gone. 
Yeah, it basically saved uh, the one the one main chick who was about to get uh, pummeled by the horseman. Uh, and not in that late night telly kind of way. That's right. He has a flaming axe. Well, you know what the problem though I think for the most part is um with with uh, Sleepy Hollow it's all based off of a short story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the they use the guidelines, you know, more or less for the horsemen, like some of the horsemen. I mean, it doesn't have, like, a weakness of not being able to cross water or anything like that, yeah. but, you know. Well, it's like, here are two characters, Ichabod Crane, the good guy, and the Headless Horseman, the bad guy. What if they got trapped in time or something? Okay, that sounds like a good premise. And then, of course, it starts going into how the Founding Fathers founded America to avert the apocalypse? Or as a place to find... Like, uh, there was something in there about them trying to find the sword that can kill anything. And how the founding of the original 13 colonies was actually because people in England were trying to find the sword, which they knew to be on this side of the ocean. Yeah, that's when it just started getting ridiculous. Season 2, I would officially say, was the season where uh, they jumped the shark... I mean, as soon as the Founding Fathers all had, like, you know, black magic or, like, you know, or, or like, George Washington's pet Medusa. Yeah, that one just like, wait, what? Yeah, George Washington has a pet Medusa. He, he left it under a church. Yeah, to guard Excalibur. Or... They don't say it yeah, by name, they but... Didn't say it, yeah, but that's pretty much, you know... Big shiny broadsword in a pool of water. You know, insert subtext. Yeah. Subtext. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the show's really well acted, I'll say that. Great acting on the show from everyone. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen, like, you know, like a, a Star Trek-type actor on that show. <laughs> I mean, it's only in season two. Hopefully it'll last for season three, and if it does, I hope it'll calm the fuck down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. The award for trying too hard right now is being determined. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know Dave hasn't seen the... He hasn't seen the newest episode, which, um, as we're talking about this, just aired uh, two days ago. But, uh, yeah, the the demon guys that are, like, worshipping their god, like these big blue guys with gl glowing red eyes and, like, horns and everything like that, are, like, straight out of Buffy. They really are. These, like, if you saw these guys, you would think they're, like, Buffy demon villains. Which isn't necessarily, say, a bad thing. I mean, you know... The makeup effects on Buffy the Vampire Slayer are still, you know, above a quality level of some things. Yeah. Not like it's the Buffy movie or anything. Ooh, ah. Like, I'm going to be a vampire, what do I need? Oh, some white makeup and red lipstick. And Rutger Hauer. And Pee Wee Herman. Hey, Pee Wee Herman made a pretty good vampire. Yeah, I actually went back and watched Pee Wee's Big Adventure the other night. That new fucking movie, man. You know, you know they're making another one? Another, well, another Pee Wee Herman movie? Doesn't surprise me. They're just getting a new show, too. The Broadway show did, like, fin fantastic. Yeah, Heard. it's because people still love him. Yeah. What's not to love about Pee Wee Herman, really? I mean, aside from the whole whacking it in an adult video store, but, you know, who hasn't? Let's be fair, who hasn't? Raise your hand if you haven't done that. Put your fucking hand down, you liar. <laughs> Everybody done it. Uh, Even the cat didn't put his paw up. He knows. And he's fixed. That's impressive. <laughs> Jacking it in an adult video store just because the fact of doing it, because what else? I don't think I would if I had claws replacing fingers, though. You know? Or if you had backwards-facing spines on your dick. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> <laughs> <coughs> what would get you first? It's like, ah, ah. Well, I mean, you can choose not to dig claws in, you know? Yeah, but I mean, with his little pads, it's like... Maybe you could, like... Because <laughs> i seen the video of the dog doing that on one of them... It was like the dog that was whacking it. Okay, sidetrack. <laughs> one of those fucked up sidetracks we've done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really know about that cat thing because it's supernatural. 
Well, because one of the the angel guy Castiel mm-hmm. was sent down to Earth, but he was completely fucking out of it. He was in an asylum. You know, he was insane. Star Trek moment. <laughs> <laughs> Special effects. <laughs> really? I hope you plan on getting down some other way. No, he usually comes down on the table, too. Hopefully not on the camera. Well, I can fix that. Uh, yeah, you keep talking. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, anyway, getting back to Sleepy Hollow and averting talking about animal masturbation with uh, pause. This is the guy who just shook us, by the way. This is our sound editor. Yeah, so, um, anyway... Dude, I've lost my train of thought. Anyway, angels and supernatural. He would go fucking mental breakdown. And he mentioned offhandedly that male cats have backward-facing barbs on their penis. And, you know, God created them that way. But he also mentioned that the female cats were not consulted ahead of time, which he thought was unfair. I'm inclined to agree. Not gonna get in the anatomy lesson, but yes, take a little anchor because basically male cats have to rape female cats to impregnate them. Ow! I mean, even if they're interested in the first place, hook. Ow! Not so much anymore. Apparently, those those females can't change their mind in the animal kingdom. But yeah, Pee Wee Herman. That's where that's where we were going with all that before the. You know, sidetrack and the bump and smash and... Yes, but Pee Wee Herman cat. still has nothing to do with, uh, <laughs> with Sleepy Hollow. Unfortunately. At least not yet. If Paul Rubin does get involved with Sleepy Hollow, though, I really hope he's, like, you know, the replacement detective for, you know, Orlando Jones. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that that one police chief chick would get killed. Uh, the, uh... The one who replaced Orlando Jones. Yeah. The first couple episodes, just me going like, fuck, I hope the Headless Horseman gets her already. Yeah, I mean, after all, he did decapitate the Kurgan. Yeah. In the first episode. Just a quick hand. Hmm. A Headless Horseman Immortal. No, that wouldn't work. Yeah, I know. Unless, like... Imagine he's like fucking just has like electricity coming out of his head like all the time and he's just walking around doing like whatever. Yeah. But yeah, most awesome thing that you'd probably see in this movie or TV show is a headless horseman walking around with an AK-47 through most of the first season. Yeah. It's like he shows up in a place and instead of just swinging a sword and an axe around, he pulls a fucking double barrel shotgun off his back and starts pumping out rounds. Yeah, because at some point he's sitting there and he has this sword and he like pulls a sword up, he's like looking at it with, like, his head, and he just drops it, and he picks up this, like, uh, <laughs> assault <laughs> rifle, and just slings it over his shoulder, and then gets back on his horse and rides away. Ichabod Crane doesn't do that shit. Yeah. I remember the one episode she gave him a gun, he fired it once and then threw it away. She's like, why'd you throw it away? He's like, I already fired it! And she's like, there's more than one! And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> but, you know, you gotta think about shit like that. Yeah. You know, this guy was dealing with flintlocks and muskets and powder balls and, you know, one shot and throw the gun away because it was pretty much a paperweight at that point. Yeah, it's like soldiers used to have, like, five or six guns lining their vest, you know, and have, like, two sidearms because yeah. you can only click boom once in battle. You don't have time to sit there and fucking reload the gun every time you fire it. Headless horseman found time. Yep. And like, hmm, bang, 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 bang. Okay. Although the Headless Horseman was sort of bulletproof. Well, or in so much as they didn't just hurt at all. Like, bang, ow. Couldn't even say ow, no head. Yeah. I mean, taking his head off was annoying. And apparently they chained him up into some sort of coffin and they threw him into a bog. Like you do. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> Um, Sleepy Hollow on Fox. And Hulu. And, and Hulu. And, and all those other places you can watch TV shows mm-hmm. online. And unless you wouldn't want to watch, you know, just watch it when it's on. Which at this point is Monday nights. 
I mean, fuck, they could cancel this by the end of this season, and you'll never hear the show ever existed again. So, it's true. then you'll want to watch it online. With great shows like The Cape. I'm lying. <laughs> what? The Cape. Uh, anyway, this has been a retrospect of Sleepy Hollow. Watch it, don't watch it. Second you know what season. I like better than this? What? The Disney movie. The Sleepy Hollow? Yeah. Mm. Headless Horseman still laughing while he's throwing pumpkins and shit. No head, but he's still cackling. Yeah, and Ichabod Crane with that long ass neck and like the. The very prominent, like, fucking cartoonish, well, cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, cartoonish uh, Adam's Apple. That was some good shit. Although I like this better than the Tim Burton movie, I think. Oh, really? A little bit. Mainly because I think the Tim Burton movie was trying a little too hard. Well... It was like, Tim Burton wanted to make a Hammer film. Yeah. But he didn't stop to ask if anyone really wanted a Hammer film. I mean, it was still, like, you know, Tim Burton-ish. Yeah. Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter, you know. They are like... Was she in that? Yeah. I don't remember. No, she was. She was, um... She was that old... Which woman in the flashback, remember? Because the oh, younger yeah. one went over, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, two characters that have to be in a Tim Burton movie. Although now that Helena Bonham Carter and Tim Burton broke up, who gets Johnny Depp? Huh. I think Tim <laughs> gets to keep him. Probably. Because I don't see Helena Bonham Carter directing any movies in the future. I need to see if Tim Burton ever made another Batman movie. Mm. With these days? <laughs> well, you know, it would get... A little more serious treatment than Joel Schumacher gave it, but it wouldn't be as heavy-handed as Nolan's. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can't really go back, can you? Because it was... You could. I mean, Tim Burton's was a lot of fun. Okay, well, just imagine Tim Burton's vision with the Dark Knight's level of special effects technology. See, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the technology's gotten better. So, yeah, we would not get the exact same movie. We would get better special effects within the same type of universe, and the Batman universe at that point was perfectly fine. It was just after he left that it went all... Yeah. But, but fuck, who knows what's going to happen with the Batman universe uh, hmm. now. Yeah, speaking of buttfuck. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Affleck. I think we'll go ahead and wrap up this yeah. uh, Sleepy Hollow talk for this one. We'll probably do another one. Yeah. Well, you won't get to see it till after the fact. Huh. Ha ha. All right. Catch y'all later. Thanks for. Oh yeah. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, unsubscribe, and subscribe again. Well, that would just make me feel bad, and it really wouldn't help our numbers. Okay, then stay subscribed, but get another channel, and then subscribe to us to yeah. make Dave feel better. Or if you happen to have another channel, maybe one that's like unsuccessfully doing video game uh, videos, you could subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate that because then maybe you get some runoff fans. Exactly. Maybe you can do like um, you know, like a guest spot at some point in the future. Taunt. All right. Adios. <laughs>